One of the greatest things that we can improve on as artists is learning how to portray light in a believable way. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna work on today, and I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step on how I paint this Venice street lamp. So in order to get this much light in your painting, we need to get a lot of darks in our paintings because without the darks, we can't really have the light in our scene. I've refilled some of my colors here that I'm going to be using frequently in the scene. So when I go to mix, I can really get a good amount of paint on my brush and mix some strong mixtures in order to get the light to really shine in the scene. So as in most scenes with watercolor, we're going to be painting from light to dark. So let's think about the lightest colors. We know we want the brightest area of the scene to be these lamps. We're going to paint that first, and as we move away from the lamps, we'll get darker and darker. We really want this light to shine, so we're gonna think about that right from the start. So I've got my scene laid out, and I'm gonna go ahead and wet down the back of my painting. And I'm taking a sponge, and I'm just getting my paper evenly damp. All right, now I'm going to do the same thing in the on the front of my painting. Now when I get to these lamps, I'm gonna try to leave a little sliver of dry paper on each of those bright spots on the lamp. Now I'm not super concerned about this, but if we could leave just a touch of the white paper, that will help us show where the, the main light source is in this scene. So I've left little bits of white of the paper there, some dry parts of the paper. The rest of it, I just wet the whole thing down. Now when I need really bright light, really warm light in my scene, I use quinacridone gold. It's a very bright yellow, and I usually mix in some raw sienna in with that. And I'm gonna go right around where this light is and make a nice little glow effect around this lamp. And do the same thing on all of these. All three of these lamps. I'm gonna get a little stronger as we move away from the light source. A little more paint, a little less water, and paint around that a little more, adding some more of this bright gold color. And there's some of that gold reflecting on the lamp post as well. So I'm gonna add that in there. All right, I'm going to take a synthetic smaller brush and get it damp. And it's helpful to have a paper towel in your hand to take off some excess moisture if you need to. And I wanna soften some of these edges. I don't want a hard edge around my light. I want it to glow like it does in our reference photo. Now it's time to get into some much stronger values. I wanna start thinking about my sky. Now, something interesting, when you use some really warm colors in the blue of the sky, you can tend to get some green in your sky, and that's not what we're going for. We want to try to avoid as much green as we can, but sometimes that's going to happen. So what I'm going to use is where this yellow meets the blue of the sky, I'm mixing in some rose matter permanent. Take some lavender. So if you have that color, you know, a more reddish color within your mix, that will help you 
to um, it acts as a buffer between the yellow and the blue and can help you avoid uh, creating green in your skies. And everything else in the background, the buildings, everything else, I can go ahead and cover all of that with this paint in this wash. Okay. I'm going to rinse some of that off. I'm going to add in a little more rose matter permanent lavender and some cerulean. I don't love that color I ended up with, so I'm gonna to try to correct that a little bit. Go ahead and take it all the way up to the top of the paper. Now, one thing you're gonna realize is the more water you use, the more drying that's gonna happen, and the more drying that happens, the more fading that happens. So you need to paint almost stronger than you would initially think to compensate for that drawing. Again, I'm painting right through these buildings. I'm negatively painting around these lights. All right, I want to add some more strength to this because I know that this is going to fade. So let's see, I'm gonna start at the top. I'm gonna to mix in some cerulean, some cobalt blue. Oh, that's way too much paint. That's the trick about adding fresh paint to your palette is that you'll get a whole bunch when you don't necessarily mean to. Okay, more cerulean. I want it to be cooler. This cooler color here at the top. Let's see what that looks like. I know I'm going to need to get even darker, so I'm going to mix in some Payne's Gray, Cobalt Blue, and some Cerulean. Probably the deepest, richest blue color that I can mix, because I really want this light to stand out. And I'm going to go back over this one more time at the top. Take a little bit of that off my brush, add in some more cerulean, maybe some more of the rose matter permanent. And I'm not so much worried about the color, more about the value. How strong is the paint that I'm putting on? Is it making that light really stand out? That's what I'm most concerned about today. Still carefully painting around my light source. Let's bring that blue all the way down. So I want to start to introduce some warm colors again, where the light is shining down onto the path. So I'm rinsing my brush off, and I want to take this blue off my palette. All right, I'm going to switch to just a little bit smaller of a brush. I'm not covering quite as large of an area, and raw sienna, some rose matter permanent, again for the transition down there, from the blue to the warm colors. A touch of Payne's Gray. 
mainly a lot of raw sienna. That's what we're using here. And I'm just working off this wet edge. And I want the, the most saturated, the warmest part to be right here under the lamp. And as I get closer to the bottom of the painting, I'm going to darken that up a bit. So I added some paints gray into the mix. And with this smaller brush, I'm gonna get some raw sienna and touch up the edge of that light. And, you know, I've kind of forgotten about these figures down here. Still see the outline of them. Maybe add in a little bit of skin tone on their face. Okay, at this point I'm gonna let things dry and then we'll come back in and lay in those buildings quickly in the background and focus on finishing up these street lamps and we'll go from there. Okay, at this point I've let everything dry in my painting and now I wanna move into painting the background of the scene. Now I'm gonna simplify the background quite a bit. I don't wanna to get too engaged in some of these um, lights in the background. There's a lot of lights and darks and positive and negative shapes back there. For the sake of this exercise, I'm gonna simplify all of this. I just wanna note that there are buildings back there and give the right amount of strength to really make our light shine. So before I start painting that shape, I need to mix in some colors. And I'm gonna start with some Payne's Gray. Some raw umber. And some cobalt blue. Maybe some cerulean. I'm not really too concerned what color this is exactly. I just want to make sure that I'm painting it strong enough. Okay, so I'm going to start kind of in the middle here. And I can kind of see my drawing, but I'm really going off of just what I what I'm looking at in my reference photo. And I just want a shape that lets us know that there's buildings in the background. I can leave some gaps every now and then, just kind of suggest some detail. Really hoping to simplify what I'm seeing back here. As I come down, I'm gonna leave kind of a bead at the bottom of that, where it's still damp. So I can continue painting down, painting around my figure here and around the other figure as well. And I'll come back and address those in a minute, trying to create an impression of what I'm seeing back here. We can go a little warmer and a little stronger in value. If 
by leaving a few gaps, we can kind of suggest a little bit of the complexity and detail that's in this building. I can add more strength on this side. Give it a little more form. All right. Okay, I'm adding some more raw sienna into this. And we'll just continue down. Kind of have a hard edge here. And we're going to go back down to this edge that we're working from. More raw umber, burnt sienna, some cobalt blue. Kind of a stronger, warmer color here is what we're looking for. Let it just blend right in with what we were painting. Now there's some maybe some gaps where the water is shining through, where the light is shining off the water. We don't have to fill everything in. All right, we're coming to the edge where we're defining this walkway. And I want to address these figures real quick before we move too far along. I'm going to try to incorporate them a little bit into the background. Let's make this one a little cooler. You can still leave a little bit of light. And let's make these um, closer to us, so maybe a little warmer. The light is shining right on them. Maybe they're wearing some brightly colored clothes. It's nice to kind of blend your figures in with the background, incorporate them into the scene and make sure they don't just look, you know, too cut out. All right, we want to mix up some dark paint. And we want to think about this right here, the dark area, the shadows underneath these bits of this dock. Or walkways, whatever you call them. All right, for that, I'm gonna use some Payne's Gray, some Lavender. I'm go ahead and add in the, the legs of this figure here. When I reach the bottom of the figure, I kind of like to blur their legs a little bit to show a sense of motion. I'm ready to move into painting the lamp post. I'm going to mix up some raw sienna, raw umber, some neutral tint, basically a darker, richer in value, warm color. Now I like to have a scrap piece of paper on the side where I can practice my brush marks if needed. We're going to start with that main lamp there. And the parts that are closer to the light source need to be warmer. So I'm using more raw sienna in those areas.
it's amazing when you get some darks around your light source how the light really starts to stand out. There's some interesting shadow areas and light areas. Right now I'm, I'm trying to just paint the shadow areas that I'm seeing. Okay, and as we move away from the light, we can start to really make it a lot darker, the lamppost. So I'm gonna add some cobalt turquoise into this mixture. A little more raw sienna, some lavender. Just trying to come up with a kind of a greenish warm gray color. Taking some brown, gray paint that I have here and I'm gonna connect that and kind of make create the base of this lamp. I'm adding a little more strength to this part of the lamp post. Okay, I think a few directional lines here. I kind of did some of that with a pencil, but a few lines into the scene um, would be good. And then after that, I'm going to show you one more way to really enhance the light in your scene. So for this, I'm using this Sign Writer's brush. You can get a really nice, thin line with that. And again, I did a few practice strokes on my scrap piece of paper to ensure that I'm creating the mark that I want to make. So earlier in the painting, I mentioned I'm not going to worry about all these tiny little highlights around the scene because painting around all those lights is really challenging. A solution for that that I like to use is using a little bit of gouache. Now gouache is opaque paint. 
and some watercolorists don't like to use opaque paint, I don't really mind because I'm using it to get a few little highlights around the scene. And this is called Ivory White. It's Holbein Gouache Ivory White. And I'm going to get some on the tip of my brush and I'm going to show you what using gouache is good for. So on the top of this lamp, these other two lamps that are being lit up by this main lamp, we can add just a couple highlights. And on our figures, we can do the same thing. Maybe there's some lights in the background. Mainly painting light comes down to values. Making sure that you're painting strong enough, compensating for drying, using fresh paint, and don't be afraid to go back in with some gouache to get back some of those highlights. If you haven't checked out my free video lesson, how to avoid overworking your painting, take a look at it. You can follow the link below. You can get to it in my bio and Instagram. So I've gotten some really good feedback from this lesson. And this is a video lesson that helps address something that I had to work through quite a bit when I was learning how to paint watercolor. I talked through eight different tips to help you avoid overworking your painting. You can follow the link below take a look at it and I hope it can help you out as well. If there are other types of scenes that you would like to see me paint, let me know down in the comments below. I'm always looking for new ideas for videos and I would love to hear your thoughts on that. So thank you for spending some time with me here today. There are a lot of places to find watercolor tutorials and I really appreciate that you are watching my video and that you're here with me today. So keep working at it, keep practicing, keep moving forward and I'll see you next time.